everyone, old school Pokemon here. Today's video, gonna be giving an update to one of my previous videos where I talked about how to package and mail eBay orders. This video, gonna be doing the same thing, talking about how to package and mail eBay orders, specifically those lower value orders that you mail via PWE. As most of you are probably aware, eBay just recently launched their standard envelope with tracking option, uh, which kind of eliminates the PWE and stamp service that a lot of the lower value orders have been shipped. Um, this is an awesome service. Uh, highly recommend using it. But so we'll talk about that today. Uh, talk about a few of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way of using this service. So for those of you who aren't aware, eBay launched this service about a month ago. Um, so first off, I'm going to show you how to how I package these types of orders. Uh, just kind of quickly go over that again. So we have a few different card supplies. We have the Ultra Pro Penny Sleeves, Ultra Pro Top Loaders, and Ultra Pro Team Bags. There are other brands that make these same card supplies. I just like Ultra Pro, and that's what my distributor has, so I use the Ultra Pro brand. Um, basically, I sleeve all of my individual cards individually. Uh, so all my all my Watsy cards are sleeved, whether that be commons, uncommons, rares, hollows, so on and so forth. Modern cards, I don't sleeve the bulk cards, so all the commons, uncommons, rares, reverses, hollows, I don't sleeve those cards just because the, the pricing on those cards is a lot cheaper. But for Watsy cards, I sleeve them all individually within these penny sleeves, and when someone purchases them, this is how I package. So if someone purchases one or two cards, it's the same process, whether you purchase one card or two cards. Take one of your top loaders, put either one or two card cards within that top loader just like that um it's a perfect fit for one or two cards these are just kind of the standard sizing top loaders um perfect fit one or two cards once you get into more than two cards three four five cards uh the thickness is too thick for one to put into one top loader uh, but we'll go over that in a minute so one or two cards within one top loader and then i take one of these team bags right here put the top loader within the team bag and seal the team bag shut just like that. And that prevents the cards from sliding out. Um, you want to avoid using packaging tape, whether that be scotch tape or packaging tape. Uh, you don't want to use that, that type of tape just because the cards do slide around within transit and you don't want the card to get stuck on the tape and possibly damaged. I have seen people use painter's tape, um, which is like, it's like less sticky. So it doesn't, doesn't cause any type of damage. So you can use painter's tape if you, if you prefer. Uh, I like using the team bags just because the team bags are cheap enough where it doesn't, doesn't really add anything to the, the cost of the pack package. Um, plus it looks a lot better than the, the painter's tape or whatever. Uh, but you definitely want to avoid using scotch tape or packaging tape or anything, anything like that. Uh, duct tape. Uh, you don't, you don't want to be using that. So now that's how I do one or two cards. When you get into multiple cards, so say someone comes along and purchases five cards, uh, the thickness is now too thick for these kind of regular standard top loaders. They do have thicker top loaders that you can purchase and use. Uh, me personally, I don't, I don't do that. I just, I just use these, these regular top loaders. And what I do is I take the team bag, put all card, all the cards within the team bag, and then put the top loader behind the cards, seal the team bag up, and mail it out that way. So now the, the top loader is behind the cards. It adds another layer of protection. Um, and like I said, I've shipped hundreds of thousands of orders like this and luckily have never had an issue in terms of um, packages getting damaged during transit um, using, using this method. So it does work, at least for me. Uh, like I said, never, never had an issue with that. So definitely recommend using that type of um, option for shipping or packaging. Now, getting into the kind of the main part of this video is the, the standard envelope service that eBay just recently introduced. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, this service was introduced about a month ago, back in middle to end of January. So I've been using this service for about a month now. Shipped hundreds of orders using this service and plan to continue using this service going forward. Uh, overall, it's an awesome service. Highly recommend it. The biggest factor for this service is it can be used for any type of cards, uh, whether that be Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Magic cards, sports cards, any type of cards that you sell, you can use this service. The biggest stipulation, though, is it has to be 
the the order total has to be twenty dollars or less in order to use the service so if someone purchases one single card for twenty dollars you can use the service uh two single cards for ten dollars each you can still use the service four single cards for five dollars each you can still use the service ten cards for two dollars each you can still use the service uh basically the the order total has to be less than or twenty dollars or less to use the service now that doesn't include any additional costs on top of the, the card cost. Uh, so if you sell a card for $20, normally the buyer is going to be charged sales tax plus shipping if you charge shipping, bringing the order total over $20. Uh, you can still use the, the standard envelope with tracking service for that order. It's the, the actual cost of the card that um, eBay is concerned about. So as long as the card total is $20 or less, you can use the service. Personally, I cap the kind of value of the order at $15. So if it's $15 or less, I use the, the standard envelope with tracking. If it's $15 or more, then I switch to first class mail, bubble mailers, so on and so forth. That's just that's just my personal preference, though. Um, the There are a few other like envelope size requirements and envelope thickness requirements um that if it's if it's um your envelope's too small or your the the package is too thick you can't use this service if you're interested ebay does have a great article on the the like envelope sizing requirements and the thickness requirements um definitely check that out if you want more information on this but Aside from that, the cost for this, this service is very similar to actual postage stamps. Uh, I was actually surprised by this when they initially launched the service because I thought the, the cost was going to be a little bit higher. So how they do the cost is it's there's there's three different tiers for this service. Uh, they go by the weight, and I kind of kind of converted the weight into number of cards just for simplicity's sake, so I'm not weighing each and every one of my packages that are being shipped with this service. Uh, basically what I do is the first tier is one ounce for 51 cents, which is the same as if you purchased a forever stamp at the post office. Uh, these are 51 cents at the post office. So this, this new, new service, uh, shipping a one ounce package via this new service is 51 cents, same as a postage stamp. Uh, now I use, if someone comes along and purchases one or two cards, I'll use that one ounce option and just ship it the way I showed you, uh, one top loader, one team bag, good to go. Now, if someone comes along and purchases between three and five cards, then I'll go ahead and upgrade to the two ounce option, which is 71 cents, the same as a one of these forever stamps at 50, 51 cents, plus one of these uh, additional ounce non-machinable stamps at 20 cents. So 71 cents. I use that for between three and five cards, like I said. Now, the, the third tier is three ounces, which is 91 cents, and I use that for between six and ten cards. Uh, so any any order that's six to ten cards, uh, the order total for me is less than, or $15 or less. I'll use that standard envelope option, 91 cents, which is the same as one forever stamp plus two of these additional ounce non-machinable stamps. Um, so the cost is the exact same as a postage stamp purchased at the post office. Um, obviously, it's a little bit higher than what I was used to paying because I was getting these forever stamps for... The last time I purchased forever stamps, this is a roll of 100 right here, and I was paying $40 per roll, which equates to $0.40 cents per stamp. So I'm paying $0.11 cents more for this per package for this new service. Um, but for me, it is completely worth it because it does include the tracking. The tracking is absolutely huge for me personally uh, because I'm hoping to be able to regain my eBay top-rated seller status and to get that emblem and get that status, you need to have 95% um, of your orders shipped with tracking. So basically all of your orders have to be shipped with tracking, which this new standard envelope does have. So that's, that's kind of the biggest reason why I've been using this new service. Um, now in terms of actual mailing supplies, I've shown you this before, but I like to use these, these envelopes right here. These are the... Um, AIM, AMO, or however you say that, uh, number 10 security envelopes. This is a box of 500 that I purchased directly off of Amazon for around $25. 
And the reason why I purchased these, these are this is the, the actual envelope right here. I purchased these because the the seal on them is a lot better than some of the, the cheaper options that you have. Like I know Amazon has their own brand of number 10 security envelopes. Uh, it's a bit less. I think it's $20 per box of 500 or something like that. But the, the quality on those is a lot worse. The This actual the seal right here, uh, it's not as sticky. So it can just like pop, randomly pop open after you seal it. So I like these ones. It's a good quality. The seal itself is good. Uh, $25 per box of 500. Not, not too bad right there. Um, so that's what I use. And this is what the actual standard envelope label looks like. Now, uh, I don't know if many people are doing what I do, but this is the biggest trick, biggest tip that I can share with you. Um, so most people that I've talked to use these kind of thermal labels. Uh, these are the four by six thermal labels that you can purchase to print uh, with your thermal printer. Uh, so most people that I've talked to use these types of labels. They print their label onto the, onto the sticker and then stick the sticker onto the envelope right there. That's what I did the first day that eBay launched this standard envelope with tracking service. And I quickly realized that this was going to cost me a small fortune because these labels, these labels are pretty cheap. Um, I pay $75 for 12 rolls of these. Each roll has 250 labels. So it's, it's not a huge cost per, I don't know what the cost is per label, but it's not a huge cost per label. However, when you're doing 40, 50 PWEs every day, uh, that cost does add up. Plus the biggest, the, the bigger reason um, with using the, the labels versus printing directly onto the envelope was you have to stick each label onto each envelope, which takes a lot of time when you're dealing with high quantities of PWE orders. So between the additional cost plus the time factor, I was really hoping to figure out a way that I could print directly onto the envelope uh, so I could eliminate these thermal thermal labels. Uh, so the next day that I shipped out orders using this standard envelope service, uh, I realized that you can print directly onto the envelope. Uh, in order to do that, I think you probably need this um, these number 10 envelopes right here just because of the sizing requirements. Uh, the label itself, or the, yeah, the, the label itself is pretty big. It takes up the whole, whole height of the um, number 10 envelopes. I don't think you can get anything smaller in terms of height. And it does take up a decent amount of the, the width. Uh, there is a little bit of room on either side. So if you can find an envelope that has the same, same height as a number 10, uh, but it's a little bit smaller in terms of the width, uh, you probably could use that. But me personally, uh, I just use these. Um, they're easy to find. Uh, they're cheap enough. Um, but I don't think you can get anything too, too much smaller. Um, not, not sure on that. But anyway, um, so that's what I do. Uh, overall, saves a lot of time, a lot of money in the long run. And this is what the this is what the actual label looks like. Uh, it does give you your tracking number up here. Uh, this is the tracking barcode. It does show the the cost. So for fifty one cents, this is for a one ounce one ounce package, and then the buyer's address is right down here. Now, the difference between this and like a normal package, normal first class or priority mail package is the, the barcode. Now, on these, the barcode is real small. This is the barcode right here. Whereas on a first class or priority mail package, you have a, you have a bigger barcode down at the bottom. Uh, those actual packages get scanned right when you drop them off at the post office and right when they, right before they get delivered at your, at your house or wherever you get your mail. Whereas these ones are a little bit different. When you drop these off at the post office, the the people at the post office, people who work at the post office, aren't going to scan these themselves. Um, these get scanned all automatically by the sorting machines. So when you drop these off at the post office, uh, they're just going to get thrown into the bin with the all the other uh, PWEs. And when it gets to the first main sorting facility in your area, that's when it's going to get the acceptance scan. When it goes through one of those one of those sorting machines, it's going to get scanned. That's when it gets your initial acceptance scan. So for me, I usually drop my packages off in the morning, usually before 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. And for the these standard envelope packages that I kept track of back in the beginning, uh, the acceptance scan was occurring later that same day, usually like 8, 9 o'clock at night. 
So there is a little bit, little bit of delay in that regard. Um, it's nothing, nothing too drastic right there, at least that I've, that I've noticed. Um, usually still occurs within that, within that same day. However, the biggest difference is the actual delivery scan. So with your normal first class priority mail packages, whatever, um, your mailman physically scans that package right before they drop it off, put it in your mailbox, leave it on your porch, whatever. Um, they physically scan that, scan that barcode for the delivery scan right before they drop it off. With these ones, um, the delivery scan occurs at the, either the last main sorting facility or your local post office, depending upon where you live. If you live in a bigger city that has a bigger post office, it'll probably occur when it reaches that local post office. If you live in a smaller town, uh, it'll probably, the delivery scan will probably occur when it reaches that final main sorting facility. So that's somewhat of an issue because when I, when I ship these out, the buyer gets a notification and says, hey, you've got a package in the mail. Uh, it's been delivered. So they'll go out and check their mail, realize they don't, they don't even have their mail for the day. So they wonder what's, what's going on. They reach out to the seller, me, say, hey, um, eBay says my package has been delivered. I haven't even got my mail for the day. What's going on? Um, that's the reason behind that, uh, is because these aren't getting scanned by your local mailman. These are getting all scanned by a machine. So that delivery scan is either occurring early that same day of delivery or possibly even a day early, uh, meaning it's either at your local post office and it'll get delivered when you get your mail that day, or it's still going to your local post office. It's, it's, that, it's at that final main sorting facility and it'll get delivered the next day. Um, that's that's kind of how it's been for me. Uh, anytime someone's messaged me saying, hey, uh, eBay says my package has been delivered. I don't have anything yet. What's going on? They either receive their package that very same day when they actually get their mail or that very next day when they when they get their mail. Uh, so that's the biggest downside to this this new service is it's not physically getting scanned by the the, the mailman or whatever. Um, all the scans are occurring as it goes through those sorting sorting machines. Um, so that that's the biggest downside right there. Aside from that, um, really really no no other downsides. There are a few glitches within the within the system for the sellers. Uh, if you try and print these in bulk, like if you try and select a whole bunch of orders and print them all at the same time, sometimes it works. Other times it doesn't. You'll get an error message saying you weren't able to print these labels. Um, just go back and edit and reprint and it'll it'll go through. Uh, for me personally, um, I usually... I'm usually able... Right now, I'm usually able to print between 15 and 20 per per attempt. Um, whereas I might have 40, 50 to actually print. So I just got to go back and edit, go back and edit, so on and so on and so forth. So that's kind of a pain. Hopefully eBay fixes that at some point. Uh, back when they first introduced the standard envelope service, uh, I was only able to print like two or three at a time. So that was, they definitely have, they definitely have improved it over time, but hopefully they'll continue on improving it going forward. Um, but yeah. So that's what I have for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below in the comments and I'll try and try and answer them to the best of my ability. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.